So you can start now, sir. Okay. Good morning, friends. This is Ranganathan here from ABK AOTS Dosokai Tamil Nadu Center. We are on the 46th team presentation of 50 teams in 50 weeks of Japanese philately. Uh, this is to commemorate the 70th anniversary of establishing a diplomatic relation between Japan and India in 1952 at the San Francisco Treaty. Now, we have another four more weeks to go. But this week, we'll start with uh, Japan and its Olympics 1964. The Tokyo Olympics 2020 was the greatest challenge with COVID threatening all the time. The Olympics had to be postponed by one year. But Japan, due to its tenacity and perseverance, still overcome this uh, big challenge. And uh, it conducted the 1920-21 Olympics successfully in Tokyo. Now, when we are talking about it, we have to go down the memory lane and look at 1964 Japan Olympics. I'm trying to bring in through Japanese stamps some of the most memorable movements of 1964 Olympics for the simple reason that is a historical event in Asia as Japan being the first Asian country to conduct the Olympics. Now let's see the Olympic presentation. This shows the map of the Taj. Olympic Taj takes a round route and then uh, it goes from Greece to the country where Olympics is being held. This is a postal card with the stamp of the Olympic Taj with the first day cancellation in 1964. And then it shows the cities visited between uh, Olympia in uh, Greece and the Okinawa, where the Olympic Taj first landed in Japan. Okay, so uh, you can see this is the 18th Olympiad to be held in Japan with nearly 5,000 athletes 4,473 men and 678 women participating in 163 events in 19 sports with 25 disciplines. The uh, Olympic was uh, opened on October 24th, 1960, I mean 10th October 1964, and 24th October 1964 was the last day. Uh, this was inaugurated by the none other than his Majesty, the Emperor of Japan, Emperor Hirohito, and uh, uh, the Olympic Taj Cauldron was uh, lit by Yoshinori Sakai. Of course, there is a reason why he was selected, which we'll see down the line in a thing. And this took place in the National Stadium in Tokyo. So Japan held the Summer Olympics and then also had the Winter Olympics later. And now let's look into the 1964 Summer Olympics. The Olympic arch runners selected to adorn the poster. So they, before the Olympic was uh, started in 1964, they released some posters showing the 1964 Olympics. Was, uh, the athlete who was there in that was Tanaka of the Juntendo University track and field team. But of course, these two stamps were not released in 1964. Later, Japan brought out a series called the 20th series, 20th century stamp series. So in one of those series stamps, uh, 1964 Olympic related two stamps also find place and uh, the number three and number four posters. They released at that time four posters. The number three and number four posters became a part of the 20th century stamp series. On February 1961, the first official poster for 1964 was the Olympics. The preparation started much earlier in Japan. 64, the first official poster was published and there were a series of four posters that were released. The third and four posters were brought out in stamps in 
the 20th century stamps. That's why you can see the stamp details and stamp issued on 20,000, uh, 2000, 2000, 2000, July 21. And uh, the two stamps of size, 56 by 37 millimeters. And they were issued as Saturnant because the whole sheet was there. And then they were Saturnant. So commemorative stamps. And uh, there were two into 50 and stamps in, in, in the uh, stamp sheet. The number three shows the butterfly swimmer. And then the number four shows the Olympic torch runner in the poster. These two have been taken into the stamps. Now, again, this time, the Olympic torch in 1964, uh, the top card was not released in 64. It, the Tom First Day cover was released much later during the Atlanta Olympics in 1996. But since it's a first day cover, that shows the cancellation with the 1966, the 1964 uh, Olympic torch and uh, Sakai standing next to the cold room. Uh, that is pasted on the cover and cancelled. This is uh, the 1996 at the Atlanta Olympics. That is the cover. Uh, anyway, since this stamp was there, I brought this uh, first day cover here. The idea of the Olympic claim was derived from the ancient Greek ceremonies where a sacred fire was kept burning throughout the celebration of the Olympics at an altar of sanctuary at Istia. The flame of the Tokyo Olympics 1964 was started on the, the run for the Olympics was started on 21st August 1964 at Olympia, Greece. We'll show you a picture of that later. And then the end date was 10th October 1964 at the National Stadium when the cold room was lit by Sakai San, and then it started burning right through the mm, uh, Olympic Games till 24th. Uh, we'll also see later what has happened to the cold room later. The number of torch bearers were 870 outside Japan, with 366 in Greece. And for Japan, the total number of runners, including the reserve runners and their support runners, were up to 20 people at a time. The figure was one lakh and six hundred and three. The carrier of the flame, Yoshinori Sakai, was chosen because he was born on 6th August 1945, the day the atomic bomb exploded in Hiroshima, in homage to the victims and as a call for the world peace. That is why Sakai san was selected. If you see these three pictures, these photographs are very interesting photographs. I took it from the newspaper. The first one, it shows uh, that the Olympic torch arriving in uh, Japan, though at that time at the uh, Naha uh, airport, uh, which is uh, uh, at that time was a part of Okinawa and under the American uh, ruling. So America was uh, there in the uh, thing. And if you can see the propeller, four propeller uh, plane landing there, with the Olympic torch at the, the Naha airport in uh, Okinawa, the southernmost part of Japan. And then this travel right through Japan and down below. And, and uh, on the top on the right hand side, you can see the torch start running in, uh, uh, started in Olympia. The, the chief uh, priestess was uh, holding the torch. And that is where the torch in the very ancient Greek style of dressing. So she holds a torch in white dress, symboling purity, honesty, and simplicity. And then that torch has run all the way and landed in Naha. And you can see down below another photograph when the torch was lit on the deck of the ship, which is in Sugaru Straits, which is between the mainline Honshu and uh, the northernmost Hokkaido. So the, you can see the torch traveled almost through Japan from the southern tip to the northern Hokkaido. And then it is brought to the Tokyo uh, Stadium, starting its run from Olympia, Greece. Now, a well-planned infrastructure development to meet the rush of the Japanese and foreign guests was done on schedule in 1964. Japanese are very famous for doing things on schedule. So the first zero type of Shinkansen was planned for 1964. So the first day, the first day cover 
and the stab of uh, the zero type of uh, Shinkansen is uh, given here. Again, you can also see this stamp was released on October 1st. And of course, October 10th was the day the Olympics started in 64, but the stamp was released on 1st. And then 36 by 26 millimeters commemorative stamp, photograph you printed, and the first day issues October 1st with the first day cancellation. You can see the thing. And of course, with Mount Fuji and uh, the first day, first Shinkansen running, the mini sheet is also uh, seen. The Tokaido new main line, that's Tokaido Shinkansen. Shinkansen means new main line, was inaugurated on 1st October 1964, just 10 days before the opening of the historic Tokyo 1964 Olympic Games. Okay. The series zero. Shinkansen train, the first in the world to operate commercially at a top speed of 210 kilometers per hour, was met with widespread enthusiasm and was quickly dubbed as a bullet train for both its great speed connecting Tokyo and Osaka only in four hours instead of six hours and 30 minutes on a conventional express train and for the aerodynamic shape of its nose. Today, Shinkansen itself has got upgraded so much so you can reach uh, uh, within uh, Tokyo and Osaka either in two and a half hours or three hours, depending on the type of Shinkansen that you take. And then there's also another uh, beautiful stamp of Shinkansen. Uh, one of the reasons why Shinkansen is able to uh, run so fast, it's uh, running on an elevated uh, track so that there'll be no hindrance or somebody coming up so he doesn't have to, the Shinkansen doesn't have to break very often and more or less more or less uh, the Shinkansen track is in straight line so that uh, there's not much of uh, speed reducing curves there. This stamp was released in 1972, six years after that on March 8th 26 by 36 millimeter commemorative stamp and uh, printed again photograph you and with the ordinary gum and uh, 20 and uh, thing. see the two photographs of the uh, inauguration of the Shinkansen. Very interestingly, the first zero Shinkansen, one of them, has been taken and kept in the Royal Museum in London. Now, if you see, it's not only the Shinkansen that is uh, made for the Tokyo Olympics. There's a Tokyo monorail which ferries travelers between Haneda Airport terminals and downtown Hamamatsucho Station ran its inaugural service on September 17th 1964, ahead of the Tokyo Olympics later that year. And that is, uh, Anila was at that time, Narita was not there. Anila was the first airport in 1972. I also first landed in Anila airport only. Construction of the Metropolitan Expressway, you can see the 10 and stamps uh, down below, multicolor stamp uh, down below. Uh, that is uh, showing the Tokyo Metropolitan Highway. And on that, you also see the cover, which has got the metallic engraved stamp sample and the stamp with the first day cancellation that is there. And then the first uh, expressway was, the first section of that was opened in Kyobashi and Shibaura in 1962. In 1962, two years ahead of that. In 1964, and uh, another airport was also connected to Tokyo Olympic venues through this uh, highway. The Tokyo monorail and the Route 1 of the Metropolitan Expressway, both constructed by the 1964 Olympics. You can see a monorail running on top and the uh, uh, Route 1 is uh, running below that, so connecting all the venues. So uh, what is important is uh, the transport and people should reach the venues with ease and depart with ease. Uh, Japan planned very well and then executed that so that they're all there on time, on schedule. Then uh, the Olympic Games Tokyo 1964 showcased Japan's technology to the world, but also the foundation of the community sports initiative and played a key role in restoring Japan's image on a global stage two decades after the World War II. Japan was the only and the first Asian country to defeat an European country in the Russo-Japan War. 
you can see down below two stamps, okay, and they're both with the same design. Uh, this stamp was released in 1906, April 29, and one is blue and the other is red. Uh, they both are commemorative stamps showcasing Japan's victory over uh, Russia. I think that's 1904, the victory was there. And then uh, the printing is by typography. And it's, if you see, that's a time it is uh, printed in a one and a half uh, Japanese cent, not yen, one and a half uh, cent stamp is the blue stamp. And then the other stamp is the three cent stamp in red. Now, that is the first Asian country to beat then. Japan was the first Asian country to host the Olympics in 1964. Japan has been the first in many places. This time showing the Olympic Stadium was released in 1964, October 10th. And that day, Olympics was inaugurated. Uh, that is the stamp that is there. 36 by 26 millimeter. And again, is uh, a commemorative stamp. The details are given there. Japan became a peace-loving nation after its World War II participation. Uh, Japan signed the peace treaty in 1951. Signature of the San Francisco Treaty was done in 1951. But uh, that was done uh, mostly between Japan and its allied powers and officially signed by 48 nations on 48 nations on September 8, 1951. And the War Memorial Opera House, San Francisco, at the War Memorial Opera House in San Francisco, California. It came into force in April 28, 1952. But India decided to sign that in early 1952, separately, not along with others. That's why we are celebrating the 70th Diplomatic Relations Anniversary this year. A set of three stamps were released on 9th September 1951 commemorating that event of signing the treaty. These are the three stamps. And you can see them as uh, 2N, 8N, and the 24N stamps, uh, released in 1951. Okay. And now, the stamp remains, uh, Japan uh, released these commemorative stamps uh, to show uh, uh, the signing of the treaty, peace treaty. And Japan remains a peaceful country renouncing war. Unfortunately, whether uh, with the today's ambitious China moving around uh, in that uh, waters, uh, Japan is, is in the process of rethinking about its uh, uh, army strength. And the budget is being increased now. But however, uh, I have to say, Japan basically is a peace-loving nation. We like to avoid any confrontation with anybody. Even within Japan, we always do. Uh, Japan is one country where there is no so many legal battles because people don't like like the idea of uh, fighting anything. So, and then Tokyo Olympics 1964 was a resounding success for Japan, both in terms of renouncing, uh, renewing international relations in the aftermath of World War II when it renounced uh, uh, war and uh, took the path of peace and creating a new global perception of the country as a peaceful, democratic, and technologically advanced nation, which it exhibited by the 1964 Olympics in all senses. When Tokyo was selected to become the host city in 1964 Olympic Games during the IO3 session in Munich in May 1959, Japan exploded in jubilation as a country emerging from the post-war reconstruction to rapid economic growth. The organizing committee conceded Japan made Olympics and scientific Olympics teams with eager cooperation of industries in Japan. On the field of play, Seiko became the Olympic Games official timekeeper for the first time and linked to the starting gun with a quartz clock and the photo finish camera, making it possible to record results down to one hundredth of a second. Such technology later enabled, enabled the company to bring the world's first commercial quartz wristwatch to the market in 1969. In January 1953, the Sharp Model TV3 
14 T became the Japan's first commercially produced television. After 11 years, in 1964, not only color television became a possibility, but using satellite of USA, Japan live transmitted Tokyo Olympics. The high profile promotion of Japan's technical powers over the course of Olympic Games through this novel innovation, such as television broadcast via satellite, enabled Japan to expand its trade networks and became a major worldwide exporter of technological goods. You can see the stamp showing the television, which was released, of course, much later, but that shows the first television and radio that were released in Japan. And the stamp was released in 2000, and multicolor stamp, the details are given there. The American network NBC, first Olympic broadcast at 1964 Olympic Games, marks its 55th anniversary. Fittingly, that happened to be the Tokyo Games. Coverage was far different back in 1964. NBC obtained the TV rights for 1.5 million. First time in Olympics history, surpassed the 1 million barrier and aired 14 total hours of coverage over 15 days. That itself was a big record in those days. Again, Ford's development and Japan's participation. We all know the Blue Samurais who made a mark by themselves this year also in the FIFA World Cup by being one of the 16, last 16. And also the Japanese audience made a big name by uh, clearing and keeping the stands as if it was never used. So Japan get into the field of sports. The 1964 became a triggering event. Hosting the Tokyo 1964 was a key driver for the development of sports in Japan particularly at the community level. It saw the creation of Japan Junior Sports Clubs associations during the preparations for the Olympic Games, which led to the emergence of sports clubs across the nation, the creation of National Football League in 1965. Uh, you can see the stamp. I'm not giving any details. It's a 1975 stamp. And Japan, that's the first football stamp of Japan I saw. So I thought I'll produce that here to show Japan was successfully entered last 16 twice in the world uh, uh, football uh, FIFA. The, the official timers of the Olympic Games had been dominated by the Swiss watchmakers Omega till then, and by since the Los Angeles Olympic Games in 1932. Seiko deployed a total of 36 models 1,270 timing instruments, including the above mentioned, and 172 staff members to support success of the Tokyo Olympic Games in 1964. By performing outstandingly under the Japan-made Olympics and scientific Olympics banners, Seiko gained an international reputation for its technological capability. So it became a Japan-made Olympics like this in every area, a new era of growth of sports started in Japan. Half a century ago, a team of young Japanese IBM engineers built a computerized real time. That's what we are talking about for the Tokyo Olympics. Okay. And uh, real time results service at the Tokyo Olympics, a breakthrough that led to a modern day networks such as ATMs and travel reservation systems. The order came in early 1962 when an executive of the Japan unit of the U.S. computer giant told Toru Takeshita, an IBM Japan Limited system engineer, to write some challenging software. It had to be, it had to be able to provide sports results to the press on behalf of the organizing committee of the 1964 Summer Olympics. The Olympics kicked off October 10th and ran through October 24th. The system processed around 66,000 items of data and released 2,780 flash reports. It had no major problem. The computer used for the Olympics was delivered to Mitsui Bank and the predecessor of the Sumitomo Mitsui Banking Corporation, paving the way for Japan's first system for managing bank deposit operations in 1965 linking the head office to its branches. All this happened as an outcome 
of the Tokyo Olympics when IBM engineers uh, started computerizing the real-time results in uh, Tokyo. And then that led to modern day networks such as ATMs and travel reservation. Here, 1964 also took place a new political movement to emphasize the importance of physical education among the nation's youth. Educational policies promoting lifelong sports were introduced ahead of the event, an approach which has continued in subsequent decades. The first Olympics to refuse participation by South Africa for its apartheid policy. In 1964, top three places in the final medals tables were held by Soviet Union, USA, Germany, and Japan. In 2020, it is US, China, and Japan. In 2018, a private research report found Japanese children have favorable levels of sports participation compared to other high-income nations. These are the medals that were released by the Tokyo Olympic winners. Now, the Yoyogi National Stadium by Kenzo Tange, you can see his uh, uh, photograph down below. He was the architect of this uh, stadium. It was an elegant symbol of Tokyo's 1964 Summer Olympics a combination of modern technique and Japanese tradition. Uh, everywhere there is a touch of Japanese tradition, you can say. Kenzo Tange was awarded the Prisoner Prize in 1987, architecture's highest award, and the citation described Yoyogi as the most beautiful buildings of the 20th century. It uh, remains simple, striking, and uh, timeless. This time was released in 1964, October 10th, 36 by 26 millimeters, multicolored, and it's a photograph you printed the stamp. And then the Budokan, the Pon Budokan was, this stamp was also released in 64, 1964, October 10th, 36 by 26 millimeters. The Nippon Budokan constructed on part of the ancient Edo castle grounds uh, to design, <coughs> to a yeah, design based on the 8th century Japanese temple and inspired by a symbol of Japan, Mount Fuji. <clears throat> the Nippon Budokan Hall was built to host the Olympic competition of judo and demonstration of the either traditional Japanese sports, including kendo, kyodo, and sumo. While it is for hosting martial arts contests, the arena has gained additional fame as one of the world's iconic musical performance venues later. So you can see the stamp. And the interior of the beautiful Nippon Budokan here, the stamp released on October 10, 1964. The National Gymnasium Stadium, the Yoyogi National Gymnasium, has become an architectural icon for the distinctive design. The gymnasium hybrids Western modernized aesthetics and traditional Japanese architecture. Tange's innovative structural design creates dramatic sweeping curves that appear to drip from the two large central supporting cables effortlessly. So that's how uh, you can see the two cables connecting on the top. And it's dynamically uh, suspended roof and rough material from one of the most iconic building profiles globally. Okay, that's a national gymnasium. The stamp was released again on October 10th, 36 by 26 millimeters multicolor commemorative stamp. 40 yen is the face value. And then, you know, the indoor sporting arena, Omozawa Gymnasium, is an indoor sporting arena located in Omozawa Olympic Park, Tokyo. The capacity is 3,875 spectators. Designed by Japanese architect, it is another architect, Yoshinobu Ashihara, along with the landmark control tower that features as the local point of the park. The gymnasium, when you hosted the wrestling events for the 1964 Summer Olympics. This stamp again was released October 10, 36 by 26, multicolor, and uh, it's a commemorative stamp, 50 and something value. Now you can see the Olympic uh, flame and the first day cover, uh, two of them, and with the first day cancellation, some of the beautiful photographs of this, and then first day cover doing all the four stamps. And with, of course, on the left-hand side, you can see the picture of the Olympic torch being uh, lit 
in Greece, and then the four stamp and the uh, information card inside our region. Now, the 1964 Tokyo Olympics was declared open by His Majesty the Emperor of Japan Hirohito. There were 20 sports 90 from 93 countries participated. Uh, diplomas, 1964, two diplomas were diplomas were prepared. You can see the diploma uh, as a testimonial for the officials and other letter of commendation for the winning athletics. And then you can see the sheet that is released, the picture of the uh, emperor, and, and then uh, the four stamp with the first day cancellation of the Olympic uh, symbol, with the Olympic symbol. On the right hand side, you can see the 1964 diplomas that were prepared. Then you can see the emperor uh, declaring the uh, Tokyo Olympics open. And a very interesting uh, picture I got on the right hand side, something very unique on October 23rd, the last but one day before the Olympics was uh, closed, two Belgium athletes, uh, one Nikolai and one Diana, they got married in the Olympic village in front of the Olympic flag in the regular uh, Shinto uh, uh, type of ceremony. And very interestingly, uh, that is the first uh, wedding to be uh, made in an Olympic village in the world for the first Olympic village uh, wedding was, that was prepared there. And then uh, let's look at the event stamps. There are two interesting things about event stamps. This stamps are shown as diamond stamps, the thing. Uh, these stamps are released from 1961 onwards as stamps. There were three stamps, though I've shown for reading purposes as uh, choir stamps, but actually these stamps are uh, more like a diamond stamp. That's why right, given the stamp on top and the three stamps uh, down below are placed in a square format. Then the same stamps as the souvenir sheet was released much later in 1964. From 1961 onwards, 61, 62, 63, these stamps are released as a set of stamps, only a stamp, which you can buy on face value. They were released. Okay, we had 1961 three stamps. Uh, one was the javelin throw. The world record of the men's javelin throw was recognized by the International Association of Athletic Federation in 1912. As of uh, 21st June 2009, 46 world records have been ratified by the IAAF of the event. New specifications for the javelins were introduced in 1986, and the javelins with uh, serrated tails were banned in 1991, uh, which had the effect of uh, reverting to an earlier record set in 1990. Uh, there are two stamps. One is 1961 stamps on October 11, 42 by 42 millimeters. That's a, shown it as a choir, but it's a diamond sham. You were there. And then the other one is 1964. This is the same stamp, the same set of three stamps released as a souvenir sheet, 135 by 60 millimeters. It was released in 1964, just before the uh, Olympic Games event in 64, August 20th. Now, if you see, uh, then we have the, the first day of stamps. If you go back and see, there are three stamps. I'm just telling what are the three stamps. The other one is uh, diving in 1964 Olympic Games. At Tokyo, four diving events were conducted, contested during the competition that took place at the Yoyogi National Gymnasium from 11th to 18th October, comprising of 80 divers from 20 nations. The events were named according to the National Olympic Committee labeling, but they appeared on the official report as springboard diving or high diving, respectively. Wrestling in 1964 Olympics. At the 1964 Olympics, 16 wrestling events were contested for men. Uh, there were eight weight classes in Greco-Roman wrestling and eight classes in the freestyle wrestling. You could see the uh, wrestling stamp in green and then the diving stamp in uh, red. So they are diamond stamps, so I showed them as diamond stamps. Then the day covers of these stamps uh, in 1961 the stamps that have been released. So the first day covers I've shown you here. The, the next set of stamps were released in 1962, June 23rd. The same stamps as a souvenir sheet was released like the previous one. 
1964, August 20th. Okay, that uh, Slovenia sheet was 135 by 60 millimeters, whereas these stamps are 42 by 42 because they are diamond stamps. These stamps show judo in 1964 Olympic. The heavyweight class was a judo event held as a part of the judo at the 1964 Olympics. The weight class was heaviest contested and allowed judo cars were 80 kilograms. 14 judo cars from 12 nations completed, competed. The final between Inokuma and Rogers was a draw with Inokuma given the preference for a slightly higher activity. So these stamps were released 1962, June 23rd, 42 by 42. Other one is 130 by 60 millimeters. Now let's look into the other two stamps. One is gymnastic, other one is water polo. polo. The 64 Summer Olympics, 14 different artistic gymnastic events were contested, eight for men and six for women. All events were held at the Tokyo Metropolitan Gymnasium in Tokyo from October 18 to October 23rd. Water polo at the 1964 Summer Olympics was held at the Yoyogi National Gymnasium in Shibuya, Tokyo, which was built in 64, 60, 1961 to 64 at the first indoor pool for Olympic water polo. In the water polo tournament, two teams from each of the four preliminary groups advanced to two semifinals, and the four winners competed for the medals. You can see the water polo, five plus five uh, thing. Uh, the plus five is goes for the uh, Olympic Games. Then you can see the first day covers for the same event. You, uh, you can see all the four, three events are given in three first day covers, five plus five. Five wins plus five wins, 10 wins is the face value. Five wins for the commemorative events. That was. And then we have the next set of uh, stamps, three stamps that were released in 1962, October 10. Of course, the souvenir sheet was released in 64, August 20th. Basketball in Olympics 1964. Basketball contests were was the sixth appearance in the sport of basketball in an official Olympic medal event. It took place at the Yoyogi National Gymnasium in Tokyo. Fencing 1964, at the 1964 Summer Olympics in Tokyo, eight events in the fencing were contested. Men completed both individual and team events, for which of the three weapon types, EP, foil, and sabre, but women completed only in foil events. Again, the same way, 62, the individual stamp, and 64 for the souvenir sheet. The rowing in 1964 Olympics, you can uh, see the three stamps in the first day cover. So we have talked about the fencing. Now we have the rowing, then we have the basketball. The men's eight events was a rowing event. The men, there were 14 boats, 120 competitors from 14 nations, with each nation limited to a single boat in the event. Only men were allowed to compete until the women's event were introduced at the 1976 Summer Olympics in Montreal, which gave national federations an incentive to support women's activities. The International Rowing Federation holds qualification events in order to determine who competes in the Olympic Games. At the Olympic Games, each National Olympic Committee can only have one boat per event. You can look at this. Uh, a uh, beautiful stamp, uh, and all the stamps also five plus five ENs. And then the first day covers uh, for all the three events and basketball first day cover, rowing first day cover, they're all separate. And these stamps are released in 19th October 10, 42 by 42 millimeters. Is there five plus five the first day cover? Volleyball in 1964 Olympics. Volleyball made its Olympic debut at the 1964 Games in Tokyo. Featuring both women's and men's events, the sport got off a strong start with host Japan and the Soviet and the Soviet Union, meaning the women's and men's events, respectively. All seemed well until IOC voted to drop the sport for the 1968 Olympics in Mexico. And then you can see the three stamps. Uh, 1963, June 23rd, they were released, the diamond stamps. And of course, the sheet was released in 1964, August 20th. The three stamps show one is the volleyball that you can see here. The other two are boxing and the yachi. So, the, uh, 
the boxing 1964 Olympic competition was held from 11th to 23rd October. The competition for men only, and there were 10 weight classes. Yach in 64 Olympics. Sailing and yaching is the Olympic sport starting from the games of the first Olympiad in Athens, Greece. Sailing has always been included in Olympic schedule. The sailing program 1966 consists of a total of five sailing classes. For each class, seven races were scheduled. Then you can see the first day covers uh, of the three stamps and uh, together, and also three individual stamps, three. Uh, so totally are the four covers per day covers with the first day cancellation with the Olympic symbol. Then cycling, equestrian, hockey, and pistol shooting, the four stamps, they were released in 1964, uh, June 23rd, and uh, two stamps in 1964, August 28th. It was the, uh, uh, the four stamps, uh, the souvenir sheet. So the four stamps were released as individual stamps in the diamond shape in 1964, June 23rd. Pistol shooting in Olympic 64, the men's IASF 50, IASSF, 50-meter pistol was a shooting sports event held as a part of the shooting at the 1964 Summer Olympics program. It was the 11th appearance of the event. The competition held on October 18, 1964, and the shooting ranges in Tokyo. 52 shooters from 34 nations competed. Then cycling in 1964 Olympics, the men's sprint was track cycling event held as a part of the cycling at the 64 Olympic program. It was held on 17th and 18th October at Hachijoji uh, Veldoro. 39 cyclists from 22 nations competed. Nations are limited to two cyclists per nation for each other. Equestrian horse jumping. The team jumping was an equestrian event held as a part of the equestrian at 1964 Summer Olympics program. The event was held on 24th October and consisted merely of summarizing uh, summing the scores of the team's three horse and rider pairs in the individual jumping events. In 1964 Olympics, the field hockey in 1964 Olympics in Tokyo took place from 11 to 23rd October at Komozawa Hockey Field. Fifteen teams played in the field hockey competition. India won its seventh gold medal by defeating the defending champions Pakistan 1-0 the gold medal match at that time in 1964 hockey. You can see the beautiful hockey stamp in diamond shape and well the stamp sheet for all these events is there. Now, canoeing in 1964 Olympics. In canoeing 1964 Olympics, see the diamond uh, uh, stamp there. This is released in 1963, November 11th. Of course, the souvenir sheet was 1964, August 20th. This team was 42 by 42. The individual stamp is already there. And the uh, emission is seven semi postal stamp. Then the canoeing at the 1964 Summer Olympic was held uh, 20th October 64 and 22nd October 64 at Lake Sagami, 60 kilometers, 37 miles from Sagami Ko, Kanagawa, Japan. There were seven events, five of which were for men and two for women. Both the women's events were. 500 meters canoeing, uh, kayaking events, and there were three uh, kayaking and two canoeing events for men, all of which covered 1,000 meters. Then look at the first day covers of all the four events and also the uh, individual event first day cover with all the Olympic uh, symbol and the Japanese flag cancelling of the first day covers. Now, football in 1964 Olympics. Football in Tokyo Olympics 1960, only one event, the men's tournament was contested. The tournament features 14 men's national teams from six continental confederations. The 14 teams were drawn into two groups of four and two groups of three. Each group plays a round robin tournament. At the end of the group stage, the top two teams advance to the knockout stage, beginning with the quarterfinals and culminating with a gold medal match in the Olympic Stadium on 23rd October 1964. There are also three consolation matches played by losing quarterfinalists. The winner of these matches play, plays fifth in the tournament. 
weightlifting weightlifting competition in 64 olympics is a tokyo in, in tokyo consists of seven weight classes all for men only also counted as the 64 world weightlifting championship modern pentathlon tokyo olympic 64 modern pentathlon and the olympic was replaced represented by two events both for men individual competition and team competition as usual olympic modern pentathlon one competition was held and each competitor score was included in the individual competition event results table and also added to his teammates scores to be included in the team competition <coughs> uh, events results table the competition consists of five disciplines equestrian fencing shooting swimming and cross country that's why the five events is what together they make a pentathlon event which is either individual or team event and you can see the stamp for the pentathlon event at the right corner diamond shaft so if you see there are six issues that were released only a stamp 1961 first issue 61 october 11 second issue 62 june 23rd third issue 62 october 10 fourth issue 63 june 23rd fifth issue 63 november 11 and sixth issue 64 june 23rd that's a concluding the one day before controlling and then the seventh issue is the uh, first day uh, 20th august 64 set of six miniature sheets were released that is the seventh issue and then the eighth issue is one sheet that is released you can see this sheet with all the stamps including the uh, tokyo olympic flame that sheet was released on 9th september 10th october uh, and 10th october 1962 days it is uh, post stamps already now that's the souvenir sheet that is uh, there 1964 october 10 93 by 144 millimeters multicolor souvenir sheet commemorative printed in photograph 140 yen is the face value and then it consists of 5 yen 10 yen 30 yen 40 yen 50 yen uh, color and the description as we are given here Attendance stamps for Japan Olympics in 1928. Again, as I said, uh, 1928, uh, this is a part of the 20th century stamps. And then in 1928, way before 1964, okay. I've shown you the stamp sheet, and you can see the uh, Japanese athletes participating in the 1928 uh, Olympic Amsterdam Olympic Games in 1928. Uh, Suruta Yoshioki set a new Olympic record of 2 uh, minutes 48.4 seconds in the 200 meter breaststroke, becoming the first Japanese swimmer to win the gold medal. So, uh, Suruta san's uh, uh, photograph makes a thing. Then, Oda Mikiko uh, became the Japan's first Olympic gold medal holder by winning the triple jump competition. You can see her jumping. And Amsterdam Olympic Games, uh, 1928 flag is uh, there in another stamp. And then Itomi Kino plays second in the 80-meter run, becoming the first Japanese woman to win an Olympic medal. So she's there in the fourth stamp. So these four stamps in Satanan are here. Uh, the, and then uh, the marathon winners, uh, Yoshiyuki, uh, October 1st, 1903 to 1986 was a Japanese swimmer who won gold medal in Amsterdam Olympics as well as Los Angeles Olympics. Mikiko Oda was a Japanese athlete and the first Japanese Olympic gold medalist. Uh, he was the first Asian Olympic champion in an individual event. Uh, Hitomi Kinoye was the Japanese track and field athlete. He was the world record holder in several events in 1920s, 1930s. was the first Japanese woman to win a Japanese medal, Olympic medal. She was also the first woman to request to represent Japan at the Olympics. Then, two marathon Japanese runners this is a very interesting thing we just wanted to share. Uh, it was the 1964 marathon, first silver medal at site, the 1964 Tokyo Olympic Games for Japan. The Japanese had not won a medal in track and field till then in Olympics. Now, uh, Suburaya was the first to make history in Japan by winning the first uh, 
medal and and then uh, Brazil helped Italy. Uh, Englishman closed the gap to beat Subaraya to the bronze. He held his medal aloof and bowed to the fans and uh, towards the box where a crown prince princess sat. But the soldier who felt as if he was running on behalf of the country, letting the silver medal slip away uh, uh, as the whole nation voice was humiliating. He vowed to win the gold medal at the Mexico City Olympics 1968. So, Subaru decided that he has to win the gold in the next competition. And uh, he won that in 1968 Olympics. Okay. Subaru never made it to to the, uh, this is by the uh, Englishman. Subaru never made it to the Mexico City. Eager to reclaim his honor, he doubled down his, uh, on his training, but his body was unable to cope up with the brutal workload then uh, favored by the distant runners. By 1967, he was battling a uh, herinated uh, disc, lumbargo, and injuries to actually his tendons, which required surgery. Okay, so uh, the, the Englishman was the one who won the gold medal in Mexico. The Japanese could not go to the thing. Is well down beyond control. His health went down beyond control. He was not able to fulfill his promise to people of Japan. Yeah, because he decided that he would win the gold in Mexico Olympics in 1968. Because he thought he has laid down his uh, country. But unfortunately, this could not be done because of his ill health. And uh, at 26, he took his life using a razor blade to cut his uh, artery. He was found dead holding his uh, bronze medal. Uh, that's a, a sad uh, way of, because uh, when you fail, the Japanese uh, have uh, this thing to commit harakiri or uh, they commit uh, self-sacrifice. And uh, unfortunately, it's sad that uh, uh, Suburaya had to take his life. Okay. And then, okay, and then Kanakuri, Shin, Kanakuri Shizu and Mishima Yahiko at the opening parade. Um, Japan first Olympic, Shinzo Kanakuri right, and the Mishima holding the flag at the opening ceremony of the Stockholm Games in 1912. This again is a part of the 20th century stamps showing the Olympic uh, runners. Uh, Mr. Kanakuri was a Japanese marathon runner and uh, won, early, won the early leaders of track and field athletics in Japan. He's been celebrated as the father of marathon in Japan, Kanakuri. And then Mishima was a Japanese track and field athlete who competed in 1912 Summer Olympics. Together with the marathon runner Kanakuri, he was the first ever Olympic a competitor for Japan. That's why these two uh, form a part of this uh, stamp, the 20th century. The father of the Japanese marathon. Okay, and now to see, to be precise, the father of the uh, Japanese marathon, he took 54 years, eight months, six days, five hours, and 32 minutes and 23.3 seconds was how long it took Shizuo Kanakuri to finish the race. Not at that time, but she's only ever recorded as a joke of matters. It's Kanakuri himself who is important because when he set off on that infamous run precisely 100 years ago in Stockholm in 1912, he was one of the just two athletes representing Japan in the very first Olympic Games, Kanakuri and the Mishima. Somewhere around 27 kilometers mark, Kanakuri collapsed, probably from hyperthermia. In simple terms, extreme overheating. So he left the race without informing the officials. In his diary, Kanakuri lamented, bringing shame to his countrymen. But at the same time, he stuck to an optimistic note, a very optimistic note, the failure will be biggest success, he vowed. In 1967, when Kanakuri was 70 years, 75 years old man, and no doubt reflecting on a long and illustrious career, he received a very, very odd invitation. 
the Swedish National Olympic Committee wanted him to return to Stockholm to participate in the 55th anniversary celebrations of 1912 Olympics. Upon his arrival in Scandinavian country, he was informed that he has become known as the missing marathoner, the man who had vanished without a trace all the way back in 1912. And thus, for the benefit of the local media and Swedish NOC, non-governmental thing, which is uh, then trying to raise funds to send athletics to the following year's Olympic Games in Mexico, Kanakuri was asked to finish the race. His time was probably read out as 54 years, 8 months, 6 days, 5 hours, 32 minutes, and 20.3 seconds. At the age of 75 years, he ran. And then starting his race and completing the race, the total time was taken was 54 years plus. By then, he was known as Japan's father of Japanese marathon. Then the flame and the cold room, okay. We have the flame and the cold room. The 64 Olympics was over on October uh, 24th, 1964. After that, what The former national stadium was demolished and to make way for the construction of a new national stadium that will be used for the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. The Japan Sports Council offered the cold room to the city of Ishinomaki in Miyagi Prefecture on December 2014, after it was removed from the former national stadium in Tokyo, to recognize the area's recovery from the March 2011's triple disaster, which is a nuclear uh, uh, powerhouse failure and earthquake and tsunami. So the, the north side of Japan, where uh, Miyagi Prefecture was one of the Miyagi's and I, all that, they were all getting, uh, they were all damaged in the uh, March 11, 2011 uh, triple disaster. They were trying to recover, and then there are a lot of recovery activities was being done. So this cold room was sent there. Miyagi is one of three northeastern prefectures that hit hardest on the 2011 disaster, with two others being Iwate and Fukushima. The City Sports Association recognized marathon events to mark the progress of reconstruction from the disaster, the Kuldron being used as the starting and ending points of the marathon. So the Kuldron was kept there, and then they conducted a marathon so that people can participate, start and end. So that is the history of 1964 Olympics. And after the Olympics, the National Stadium was demolished create a new stadium for the 2020. And the cold room was uh, used to inspire the people who were on the recovery path in the northeastern prefectures of Japan after the March 11, 2011 triple disaster. So this is the new stadium that you see in 2020 that is constructed. Thank you all for uh, participating today. Uh, on the right, you can see the Tokyo sky tree. Uh, now and then left you see the new Tokyo Stadium. Thank you for joining me today. I hope to see you all next week when we'll be talking about the part two of the Olympics of 2020-21. Uh, that's almost uh, we are finished. We are there another four more. We should be able to complete our targeted 50 teams run. Thank you all very much. Have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy your day. Before I conclude, let me wish all our friends, uh, people who have joined me, people who are all over the world, a Merry Christmas and a wonderful 2023. And let the 2020 through, uh, though some corona is threatening us from some corner, let's hope we'll have a corona free, health free, happy year 2023. Wish you all a great 2023. Thank you.